You know when you start up a fresh file of Stardew and you spend the whole day fishing, and then you go to bed that night and you see this? I just think that screen is so satisfying. So I got to thinking, would it be possible for me to level a skill from zero experience all the way to max level at level 10 in just one in-game Stardew day? I mean, getting a skill from level 10 is usually something that takes several in-game years, but could I pull it off in one single day? Well, firstly, we'll have to look at the way you level up your skills in Stardew Valley. Basically, the way experience works is that every action you do gives you a different amount of experience points depending on how difficult that action is. Let's use the four skill, for example. If you pick up a forage item off the ground, that's worth seven experience points to your total. While chopping down a tree will give you 12 experience points, but cutting down hardwood stumps will give you a whopping 25 experience points. To get to level 10 in a skill, it takes 15,000 experience points. So since we can determine how many experience points we need and how many points each action gives us, we should be able to route out the ways to get to level 10 in each skill for this challenge. I'll be going through all five skills and seeing if it's possible in a normal play through of Stardew to achieve this goal. I've got a few rules for this challenge though, with the first one being pretty obvious, being that we can't get a single experience point in the skill before the day we decide to max it. Now it's important to remember that this is different than getting level one in the skill. If you cut down a single tree, you won't reach forging one, but you'll still have 12 illegal forging experience points. The only other rule is that these must be achievable in a real playthrough of Stardew Valley. We could very easily just spawn in 5,000 green slimes on our farm using cheats, and then just get level 10 combat in an instant, but we're not gonna be allowing that. I did end up using some cheats mods to accomplish the setups for the things you'll see in this video, but it was all done to accomplish things that are possible in a normal playthrough of Stardew. They would just take a really long time, like hundreds of in-game hours, but they are technically possible. And on the day of me trying to get to level 10, I didn't use any of these mods at all. And all the testing for this still took me like 30 hours total, so really this was just for my own sanity. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get into our first skill. Farming. Now farming is perhaps the easiest skill in the game to max. Farming experience points is all gained at once upon harvesting a crop, so you don't get any experience points for planting or watering them. So all we need to do is get enough money via means other than farming, probably mining or fishing, and then we can buy all the seeds we need and then just harvest them in a single day. A pumpkin gives 31 experience when harvested, so you'd only need to plant around 484 of them in order to get the 15,000 experience points we need. It would cost around 48,000 G to purchase that many pumpkins, which is probably how many the average person plants in fall anyway. Just for the sake of fun, I decided to do it in the crop that gives the most experience points for harvest the sweet gem berries. Sweet gem berries give a whopping 64 experience per harvest, which comes out to be only 235 sweet gem berries. Once we've planted all the seeds, all that's left to do is wake up, harvest, and watch the experience come rolling in. Hey, level one farming. All right, now's the time to see if we did this right. Level one farming, level two farming, three, okay. Tiller, of course. Six, seven, nine. Let's go! Let's go! Next up after that is fishing. And fishing, I'm sorry to say, is almost certainly impossible. The problem with fishing is that there's no prep work you can do at all before the day of. It's just a matter of fishing up as many fish as you possibly can in a day. The one thing that could help us out here is crab pots. As if we get enough crab pots beforehand, we could harvest them all in the same day and then get all the fishing experience points at once. But you don't unlock the recipe nor the ability to buy crab pots until fishing level three. So besides Besides the three crab pots we get from the community center, we're fresh out of luck. So really the only method for raising our fishing experience points is just casting our rod into the water and fishing things up. You'd have one day to fish up 15,000 experience points worth of fish. For reference, that's 1,154 sardines in one day. If you get perfects on every single fish, this number only goes down to around 500 sardines in a single day, but this number still seems more than impossible. Even if you had a seed that had bubbles for an entire day, you'd be lucky to even get to the triple digits at all, so not even close to 500. Safe to say that fishing is definitely impossible, unfortunately. 
Perhaps the next skill will give us a little bit less trouble though, because next up is mining. Now the mining skill is a bit more complex than the previous ones, since there's some prep work we can do, but a lot of it is really hard to pull off. Mining experience points can only really be gotten in one way, destroying rocks. Rocks outside the mines give a whopping one experience points, and the rocks inside the mines don't give any at all. So our best bet is going to be looking towards the rarer gems that can spawn in the mines. Most of the gem nobs give a decent amount of experience points, but the big ones are Iridium Ore, which gives 50 experience points per node, Rubies, which give 80 experience points per node, and Diamonds, which give you 150 EXP per node. We could try this out in the regular mines, but just hoping on gem spawns is going to be very difficult. It'll be a lot easier on us if we can use the increased Iridium spawns from Skeleton Caverns. But how do we unlock Skeleton Caverns without collecting any mining experience points? In order to unlock Skull Caverns, you need to do two basic things. Fix the bus and reach the bottom of the mines. Fixing the bus should be easy enough. We'll just have to complete four bundles from the community center that don't involve mining to unlock the vault room, and then purchase all the vault bundles for 42,000 G. Now for the skull key. You're probably wondering, how do you get all the way to the bottom of the mines without destroying any rocks? Well, rocks inside the mines don't actually give any mining EXP unless they drop an ore of coal. So we could just break open rocks and reset the day every time one of them spawns coal. But that sounds... Awful. The amount of resetting you'd have to do to make this work makes it not realistic at all, and it would probably take you years to get all the way to the bottom. But there is another, much easier way for us to accomplish this goal. If we could staircase all the way down to the bottom of the mines, they wouldn't have to break open any rocks. But the staircase recipe is locked behind the mining level 2 requirement. Fortunately, there is another way. On Sundays, the desert trader will trade jade for staircases. So if we can get 120 pieces of jade, we should be able to get to the bottom of the mines with no rocks broken. And while jade is most commonly found through the mines, there are several other methods for us to obtain it. Blue slimes have a 2% chance of dropping it, it can show up in fishing treasure chests, and there's even a chance for you to receive it as one of your gifts from the Feast of the Winter Star. Fishing treasure chests is definitely our most repeatable and easiest method, however the chance of getting one jade from a treasure chest is slim, and the chance of getting 120 is nearly impossible. Luckily for us though, when we completed the 25,000 G bundle at the vault, the reward is one crystallarium. Using this, we can dupe as much jade as we want just by sleeping. This gives us access to infinite staircases, which not only gets us the skeleton key, but will also make skeleton caverns leagues easier. Now that the skull caverns has been unlocked, we should be good to go, right? Well, not exactly. We're going to need to destroy close to 300 nodes of iridium in order to cross the 15,000 experience point threshold. And while we now have infinite staircases, we might need some other supplies to aid in our journey deep into the cavern. The four main items I thought might be important to secure were an upgraded pickaxe, a weapon, bombs, and explosive ammo. First off, the pickaxe can be gathered relatively easily without mining, as you're able to buy ore from Clint. You can easily buy your way all the way up to a gold pickaxe. In fact, we can even get an iridium pickaxe through either fishing up iridium from fishing chests or by using a statue of perfection. Next up, we'll need a weapon, and I had my eyes set on the Galaxy Hammer, the best club in the game pre-Ginger Island. All we need for this is 60,000 G and a Prismatic Shard. The 60,000 G is easy, and while the Prismatic Shard is harder, there are still tons of methods for us to get one without mining. The easiest way is honestly probably by going through Skull Caverns itself, staircasing down for treasure rooms, and hoping we get the 4% roll to get a Prismatic. Now, the only thing left for us to do is to pick up some explosions. Mining 300 nodes of Iridium is going to take a while, even with our Iridium pickaxe. But luckily, destroying rocks with bombs gives you mining experience points. It allows us to destroy large groups of nodes without ever wasting our precious time whittling at them with the pickaxe. We can't craft bombs since they're a recipe we get from leveling up our mining skill, so we'll have to purchase them from the dwarf. All of the dwarf scrolls can be obtained from either killing enemies or tilling in the mines, so all these are more more than possible to achieve. Lastly, I want to grab some explosive ammo for the slingshot. Explosive ammo is unlocked at combat level 8 and afterwards can be bought from the Adventurer's Guild. We're gonna have to do a ton of enemy grinding here, but the ammo is going to be more than worth it. And with that, everything's set up! Phew! That was quite the setup. But now we should finally be all set and ready to go. Time to finally enter 
the Skull Caverns. My goal here was purely for Iridium. 50 EXP per node is pretty damn good, and in the later floors, Iridium clumps up pretty large, so I thought that might be my best bet. I staircased down past the first 200 floors to actually get where the good Iridium spawns. Once I got down there, if I saw any Iridium in my immediate vicinity, I'll shoot it with my slingshot, and if I see any large clump ups throughout the floor, I'll go around and place bombs everywhere. If I don't see any Iridium, I'll just staircase past the floor entirely. You'll also see me pausing as I go between each and every floor. This is a method called pause buffering. Basically, when you travel between floors in the mines, you're completely immobile, but time is still moving. But if you pause the game right as you transfer between the floors, the game is paused when you arrive at the next floor, so no time loss at all. It's not much, but it can save you close to an hour or two per day once you get really good at it. Once I got low enough, Iridium started spawning in huge chunks, and the explosions from my bombs ended up grabbing other valuable nodes like rubies, golds, and even diamonds. I've practiced a lot of Skull Caverns runs, and I can usually go home with like a full stack of Iridium, so I was on edge, but I wasn't too particularly worried. The fact that I didn't actually have to pick up the Iridium helped a lot too, as I could just leave a bomb somewhere and not have to worry about waiting for it to explode and going back for the Iridium. At around 7 o'clock, I had made it all the way down to floor 408. I went and checked my skill screen, and sure enough, I had hit level 10 mining. I ended up having more than enough time with an extra 7 hours left in my day. Just like that, we marked down another skill completed. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5, minor, level 6, level 7, level 8, level 9. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. So far, we're two for three, so let's take those odds and try out combat. Now, combat is extremely similar to mining, but like 10 times harder. I thought combat would be impossible, as even if you exclusively slay the enemy that gives the most experience in the game, the Iridium Bat, you would still need to slay 682 of them. 682 bats. I tried attempting this using a similar method to the one I did for mining, with the slight adjustments being that I couldn't use a galaxy hammer, as that would require entry to the Adventurer's Guild, which requires me to kill 10 slimes. So instead, I had used the Slammer, which sometimes can drop from crates in the mines. I tried heading deep into the Skull Caverns, except this time I was checking for floors with large amounts of enemies spawned on them, or infested floors. It was far more difficult than mining, as a lot less enemies spawned than Iridium nodes. I tried using this method, but despite my best best efforts at the end of the day, I only hit level 5, which is like a third of the experience points you need to get to level 10. So just like that, it seems like another skill is impossible, unless there was some way to set up enemies beforehand and then execute them all on the same day. I mean, like, I can attempt combat, but I don't, I don't even know, like, what I would do, because there's no way to, like, you can't prep enemies beforehand, you know? I guess unless you use, like, the slime hutch. Oh, are we gonna have to get into slime breeding? Oh, you're so right. This probably is possible. Ugh. Oh, God. The slime hutch allows you to breed slimes on your very own farm. If you could just set up enough slime hutches around your farm and fill them all with slimes, then maybe, just maybe, I would be able to get to combat level 10. Of all the hatchable slimes you can place in your slime hutch, the one that gives the most experience points is the tiger slime at 20 experience points per kill. Each slime hutch can hold up to 20 slimes, meaning each hutch will give us 400 experience points if filled completely with tiger slimes. This means we need to fill our farm with 38 slime hutches. 38 slime hutches. I want the beach farm as it is the largest farm in the game with the most buildable tiles, and I probably spent several hours in the farm planner trying to fit all these in, and then a couple more hours trying to actually fit them in the farm. But after hours of testing, I was finally able to fit all the hutches. <laughs> Now that we've got them all placed down, it's time to fill them all up. To fill them, we're gonna eat tiger slime eggs. Slime eggs are usually dropped from killing slimes, but luckily, if you fill a fish pond with 10 lionfish, tiger slime eggs will drop at a 1.8% chance. To pull off this experiment, we're gonna need 750 tiger slimes, and thusly, 750 tiger slime eggs. Dear Lord. But luckily, we can also fill these hutches through slime breeding. If you don't know, all slimes are gendered, with the ones with antenna being male and the ones without being female. If we can fill each hutch with a male and a female slime, then we should be able to fill up the hutch to the 20 slimes we need. So even if we somehow get the 
best luck in the world and always get a male and female in each hutch, we'd still need 76 slime eggs. Okay, after all that has been prepared, we are finally ready to start farming up some of these tiger slime experience points and hit level 10. I've procured 38 slime hutches on this farm, each filled with 20 tiger slimes. And after a couple mishaps... How do you harvest these things? <coughs> Oh no! no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm finally able to get into the groove. And after slaying a couple full slime hutches, I decided to check my experience points. And I'm still at level zero. That's weird, since the level up from zero to one should only be a hundred experience points for five slimes. I reset the day and try again, but still no experience points. I'm beyond confused, so I go to check the wiki. Combat is the skill associated with fighting monsters in the mines, the skull caverns, or on the wilderness farm. Oh. Oh. I feel like a f idiot. Well, I guess slimes killed from slime hutches don't actually give experience points. Good to know. You're able to breed slimes outside the hutch, but this is only possible using the slime incubator, of which the recipe isn't unlocked until after combat level 8. So safe to say that getting combat in a single day is also impossible. And with that, we've only got one skill left. Two completed, two impossible. Will we complete the last skill, or will we have to admit defeat once again? Well, the final skill we're going to tackle today is foraging. Now, foraging experience points can be cultivated in two main ways, cutting down trees or picking up forage. The first option, cutting down trees, will most likely take far too long, seeing as we'll have to cut down 1,250 trees. I've gotten pretty good at animation canceling, but not that good. Also, the logistics of being able to fit 1,200 trees on your farm seems less than optimal, and since you wouldn't have foraging level 1, tree seeds would never spawn, and thusly you couldn't plant them in places like the quarry or the desert. So foraging for items seems much more likely. My first thought was to use wild seeds, as this would allow us to cultivate massive amounts of foraging and to guarantee they'll all be in one spot on the day of. Unfortunately, you can only craft wild seeds using already picked up forage, and you don't unlock the recipe until several foraging levels in. But there is one item that gives foraging experience points when picked up that we could control how many we get on the day of. Truffles! Despite being dropped by a pig, truffles actually give off seven foraging experience points when picked up. This means that we would need to pick up 2,143 truffles in order to reach level 10. The nice thing about truffles is that they don't despawn until the end of the season. So we could just set up a bunch of fully grown pigs on the first of the month, let time run until the 28th, and each pig will have produced around 28 truffles. By this logic, we would need 77 pigs across our farm, and they would need to produce a truffle every single day. I rounded this up to 10 fully upgraded barns filled with pigs, or 120 pigs. I did this in case some of the pigs are unable to produce truffles on certain days, or perhaps there's so many truffles on the farm that one of their barns gets blocked, or any other errors that we could run into. I also placed a golden clock on the farm to prevent any debris from spawning and blocking additional truffles from spawning. You might be wondering how I was able to clear a farm without getting any foraging experience, and well, it's by using bombs. Unlike they do for mining, trees felled with bombs don't give any foraging experience, so we can just run around dropping bombs to and fro. So I started up a beach farm, since once again, it's the biggest farm, and placed down 10 barns, upgraded them to deluxe, and stuffed them full of pigs. I placed some auto petters in there and waited a couple weeks. Then, on the first of the month, I went outside, and I waited. Waited for my piggy empire to develop. I stand there for hours at a time as the piggies stomp around the farm, filling it with truffles as far as the eye can see. Eventually, you could see more truffles on this farm than you could dirt at all. Then, finally, the day had come. Spring 28 the final day of the season. It was time, time to pick up the truffles that had flooded my farm. I had no way of knowing if I had enough truffles to be able to hit my goal, so it was time to do the good old pluck and pray strat. I chugged a coffee, shoved some spicy eel down my gullet, and tried to pick up the truffles as fast as I possibly could. There were just so many of them though. I was honestly scared that I wouldn't be able to pick them all up. About midway through, I realized my hand was in excruciating pain from trying to animation cancel pick up every single truffle. But at least now when my doctor says he thinks he has carpal tunnel, I can point straight to this video. After collecting all of the truffles on my farm, it was only about 6 p.m. and I was worried about not having enough experience points to get all the way to level 10, as when I added up all the truffles in my inventory, I was coming up a little short. In an effort to push me over the top, I went around and cut every single hardwood stump and log from around my farm and the secret forest. Then I just cut down trees until I passed out. I know that either way, I'm insanely close, but did I get it? Was I able to barely achieve level 10 foraging. Is it possible? Did my piggies do me right? Level 8?
Level nine? <laughs> oh, I don't think we got it. I don't think we did. Oh, so close. So close. No. Afterwards, I end up putting my save file into a save file editor to see how far off I was from level 10, and it turns out I was only 498 experience points away. 498 experience points. Just 71 truffles away. A truly sad reality. But I, I did pretty much everything I possibly could, and any more pigs that I placed on the farm would just be taking away space where more truffles could spawn. It was hopeless, and seemed like I'd have to mark this as another loss. 2-3. Winner. Stardew Valley. It looks like this is the end for me. Or is it? What if there is a way we could control exactly what would spawn on our farm? What if we could plant seeds across our farm that would guarantee we get all the way to level 10 in one day? Yes, I'm talking about wild seeds. I brought them up earlier, but if there is actually a way to plant wild seeds on our farm, it would make this process basically guaranteed. But there should be no way to craft wild seeds without first picking up forage, right? Well, let me introduce you to my new little friend, the winter root. The winter root is just like forage in any other seed season, except winter root is not picked off the ground. Instead, it's hoed up from the ground. In this way, we are able to cultivate an infinite number of winter root using just our hoe, and we'll gain zero foraging experience points. So now we have an infinite number of winter roots, but how does this help us get any foraging experience points? Well, if you place a winter root inside of a seed maker, it generates one to three winter wild seeds. And if we plant these winter wild seeds, after a couple of days, they'll grow into one forage. So doing this, if we're able to plant 2,143 winter wild seeds on the day we want to get to level 10, we should be able to guarantee 2,143 pieces of forage on our farm. I took my hoe to the beach and cleared every single spot on it. In doing this, I got 36 winter root in a single day, which would mean this would take around six 60 in-game days of just clearing the beach and sleeping. Once we've done all that work though, the plan should be pretty simple to execute. We just plant the 2,143 winter seeds, and then once they've sprouted, we just pick them all up. It takes about eight in-game hours to pick them all up. But once we had, we go to sleep for the night and... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, level 10 foraging. Oh my God, it's so, I'm so happy to see you. I thought I would never see you, baby. And just like that, we did it. Achievements that should take years in in-game time, done in just a single day. I know we weren't able to get every single one, but I'm more than proud of getting half. Thank you guys for checking out this video today. If you liked the video and made it all the way to the end, please make sure you give it a like and a subscribe. These longer post commentary videos take me way longer to edit and to create than the other ones. So when you like it, it really helps me out a ton and lets me know that this is the kind of content that you guys enjoy seeing. Thank you guys all so much and I'll see you next time. <laughs>